Welcome, welcome to the Divine Will series. This is Monday Nights in the Divine Will. <clears throat> we are coming together to listen to Lesson 5 on Louisa and Mercy in the Divine Will. This series was given back in November of 2015. We are uh, gifted to be learning from Father B. Thomas Celso, BDV. And this series, they didn't catch the beginning, so I'm going to go ahead and share the screen for the um, document. And we'll read the first part that um, they missed. So this is talk number five, lesson five, beginning with volume 22, August 12th. 1927, my daughter, Louisa, water, fire, and blood shall unite together and shall make justice. All the nations are taking up arms to make war, and this irritates divine justice more and disposes the elements to take revenge against them. All right, we're going to pick up now with Father Celso. Fiat. The first purification was of water. The second purification was of blood. And now the third purification is fire. So Jesus is showing. Um, what's coming is the, the culmination of purification. Uh, and it's going to be more than uh, the flood. More, it's going to be more horrific uh, the, with, with blood and uh, it's fire from heaven that's coming. This is what's going to make divine justice. All the nations are taking up arms to make war. Okay, and this is 1927. You see World War II coming up. This irritates divine justice more and disposes the elements to take revenge against them. So the elements, earthquakes, floods, famines, plagues, uh, tornadoes, this is what's coming. Um, you know, they just said what was it, last week, that the magma under um, uh, Yellowstone National Park is so enormous, and that's, that is one of the largest volcanoes in the world. Uh, this is going to, it's going to, it's pushing the, the ground up. Uh, the reason, Jesus says, is uh, the elements are going to take revenge against mankind. Um they said the amount of uh, ash will go all the way from Yellowstone to Ohio. It will cover Yellowstone to, to Ohio. Um, you have to understand that our job uh, is to uh, um, basically pray for mercy. Uh, that's why this, this year... Uh, it's so essential that we begin to, to live this year the way God wants us to. Therefore, the earth shall pour out fire, the air shall send fountains of water, the water, the wars shall form fountains of human blood, which shall, in which many shall disappear, and cities and regions shall be destroyed. What wickedness, after so many evils of a war, they have gone through that they are preparing another one more terrible and they're trying to move almost the entire world as if it were one single man. Does this not say that sin has entered deep into their bones to the point of transforming their very nature into sin? And we can see that now, what's happened this, this uh, past summer with the Supreme Court. It's transforming their very nature into sin. Uh, remember what... Uh, 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 Jesus told St. Catherine of Siena is that the homosexual act is so offensive to God that even the demons turn their backs in repulsion. They're repulsed by what's going on. And we're being, we've been taught that this is normal. Uh, you know, how, how sad this is um, for the world. Uh, and again, uh, we have to remember what happened before. Where, you know, what happened at Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, it's, it doesn't exist anymore. 
Oh, how ill I felt in hearing this, and I prayed, Jesus, put justice aside, let mercy enter the field. And if he wanted a victim, I, Louisa, was ready, as long as the people would be spared. And if you do not want to console this to me, take me away from the earth, for I can no longer stay here. Your privations give me a continuous death, and the scourges tortures and torture me. And then how can I live when I cannot spare my, our brothers of the pain, pains through my pains? Jesus, Jesus, have pity on me. Jesus, have pity on all. Placate yourself and make your little daughter content. So again, here's another prayer that we can pray uh, during the year. Jesus, Jesus, have pity on me. Have pity on everyone. You know, past, present, and future. Volume 24, 830, 28. With the kingdom of my divine will, everything shall be renewed in creation. Things shall return to their original state. See, paradise is coming back. We're re-entering into eternity. We're not going to be trapped in time and space where this body becomes food for worms. You have to understand that uh, the preternatural life that God wants us to possess is uh, exactly uh, what Adam had before the fall. Okay. This thing's buzzing on my desk here. I can't figure out what it is. Okay. This is why many scourges are necessary. See, this is what's coming. See, the, to go back to paradise, that's where we're supposed to live. The preternatural life of integrity, impassibility, immutability, and immortality. To begin to live the life that God originally breathed into Adam in God's image and likeness. Again, the saints through baptism were in God's image. And they did the will of God. But they didn't live in the will of God, which causes the likeness of God. This is the gift that was given only to Louisa. And uh, it's this is Louisa's gift and the first one who will live that life um, with Louisa is the Pope. Jesus says, many scour this is why many scourges are necessary and shall take place so that the divine justice may place itself in balance with all my attributes in such a way that by balancing itself it may leave the kingdom of my divine will in its peace and happiness and therefore do not be surprised, surprised if such a great good that I am, God is preparing and that I want to give is preceded by many scourges. It is my justice that claims its right so that once balanced it may place itself in peace with creatures giving them no more bother. It's more so, since the children of the kingdom of my divine fiat shall no longer offend it, and my divine justice shall change all of itself into love and mercy for them. So think about it. This divine balance must happen, okay? How, how awful uh, is the world? Half the nation, think about it, half the nation wants abortion. Half the nation, more than half the nation, wants uh, uh, um, uh, homosexual marriages. Again, God is going to balance this. How does he balance it when half the nation doesn't want it? Uh, you, you, have to, you have to see um, that it's our job to begin to live this life of peace, order, and happiness with our God. And... Again, like Jesus says, uh, the children of the divine will will no longer offend God, will no longer uh, um, claim justice to come upon the earth. See, our job is to begin to live this now. That's why he says, when the chastisements happen, the souls of the divine will, the chastisements will have little or no effect upon the souls living in the divine will. He says that... Uh, the survivors will be living in the divine will. Even though a large majority of humanity will be gone, the survivors will be living in the divine will. Okay, like Noah, they will not be harmed. It's, this is very important to begin to live this life. Is We might not have the time to do this if we're not doing it now. I, well, I, I know that that's true. Jesus says that. Our Lady says that. You will not have the time to change. When this begins, you will not have the time to change. So I was always thinking, well, 
you know, I've got at least 30 seconds. You know, the Lord bless me, Father, for I have sinned. A real fast act of conversion. But Jesus says, no, there, there will be no more time. There's, there'll be no time. You see, we have to understand, why did the Holy Father say, get ready for the third millennium, the glory of the church, the new springtime of mankind, where no eye has seen, no ear has heard what God is going to do for the souls that love him? What's coming is so spectacular that everyone will want to be a baptized Catholic. Every Jew, every Buddhist, every Hindu, every Muslim, every Protestant will say, I want to be a baptized Catholic. I want this universal life. What God is going to show the earth is going to astonish the world. And uh, everyone will be living in the divine will. So again, this is what our God has planned for us. So he needs us to live it now. Volume 29. Nine, excuse me, seven, thirteen, thirty-one. My daughter Louisa, the, the Louisa, the one who lives in my divine will, becomes the peacemaker between God and the creatures. All of Louisa's acts, all of Louisa's words, all of Louisa's steps, all of Louisa's prayers, all of Louisa's little sacrifices are like many bonds of peace between heaven and earth. They are like peacemaking weapons. As Louisa fights her creator with weapons of peace and love in order to disarm God, to render God favorable, to change the scourges into mercy. You see, this is our job this next year. It's to, it's to fight God with, divine, with this gift of the divine will, of, of peace, of love, to disarm God to render God favorable to mankind, to change the scourges which have to come into mercies. Now this is, uh, again, the battlefield of, of our, our, our souls are the battlefield where the devils and the angels are fighting. The devils want to pull us into hell to just destroy us. The angels want to bring us into heaven so that we can praise and glorify God. So this battle is going on. And this is why God has to say to each and every one of us, uh, with our family, our friends, you know, basically he's going to strip us of family and friends. He's going to strip us of a, a lot of things in order that we can be with him completely so that he can speak to us. He can talk to us. He can teach us. He can guide us. He becomes our Lord, our Savior, our Master, our King, our all. Uh, again, the scourges are going to be turned into mercy with the souls linked to Louisa during this year of mercy. And just as the human shall form the war to wage war against God who had created it, not only this, but it broke the accord, it broke the order, broke the peace, so my most holy divine will, with the strength of its omnipotence, reigning in the creatures, converts what the creature does into bonds of accord, bonds of order, bonds of peace, bonds of love. So from Louisa comes out as though a little white cloud that surging spreads and rises up to the divine throne and bursting into as many voices for as many acts as she has done. And it says, great God, peace I bring to you from the earth and you great God give me your peace to bring it as a bond of peace between you and the human generations see that Jesus says this is not about becoming a saint this is about saving the human generations see God wants to use us who he has chosen to live at this time who has chosen to give us the book of heaven to begin to read and to study so that mankind can be brought into the kingdom. The kingdom can be brought on earth as it is in heaven. See, this is why this is the gift of gifts. It's the prodigy of prodigies. Our God has planned this from the beginning of time. He's planned that we are here. It's a divine decree. We have been predestined by God to live at this time. Our destiny is to live in the divine will. That's why he says you must live in the divine will. And that means the God has planned it and he wants this. You will have all the grace, all the strength, all the power with your fiat to live in the divine will. If you can say fiat, you have this. If you can't say fiat, then you can't have this. So you have to look at your life. In what way are you worried, fearful, anxious, complaining, and negative? 
What, in what way are you sinning? And that all has to stop. We have to begin to live the purity of Jesus and Mary, the new Adam and the new Eve. That's our, our destiny is to bring the divine will to the world. That's why uh, you look at Our Lady of America. It's very, very clear. Very, very clear. Uh, the, the children of America will bring purity to the world. The purity is the divine will. This little cloud ascends and descends, ascends and descends and ascends and does the office of peacemaker between heaven and earth. That's Louisa and us linked to Louisa. See, what God has given to Louisa, he wants to give to us if we are one with Louisa and only if we're one with Louisa. Vine 30, 12, 6, 31. Beloved daughter of my divine will, Louisa, to live in the divine will means to recognize its paternity and as she feels herself as daughter, she wants to be close, clasped on the knees of her father and to live in his house. Not to, see, it's live in the kingdom on earth as the saints possess it in heaven. And by right, because she recognizes herself as a birth from God, who with so much love generated her and delivered her, delivered her to the light. And Louisa looks at all other things as extraneous, without the sweet bond, either of paternity or of a relationship. So she sees with clarity that uh, by going out of the house of her father, she would be a lost daughter, who would not even uh, have not even a nest in which to form her abode. And this is why Louisa, the one who does and lives in my divine will, tears the veil of our divine power and finds in her creator powerfully, uh, that her creator powerfully loves Louisa and us linked to Louisa, draws Louisa and us linked to Louisa, the creature with his power to make himself powerfully loved. So we love God more than the saints powerfully loved in the divine will. See, they did the will of God. God is asking us to live in the will of God, to love with his love, not a human saintly love. This is why the prayers of the divine will are so powerful. It's not just to, to pray the rote prayers of the saints, learning how to love God as the saints love God, but to love God as God loves God, as God loves himself. Tearing the veil, she finds this aquarium of the divine power and she fears, she fears no more because if he is powerful, he is powerful to love Louisa and the souls linked to Louisa, to make himself loved and by and loving with powerful love, Louisa and the souls linked to Louisa become daring and tear the veil of the divine wisdom, of divine goodness, of divine mercy, of divine love and divine justice, and finds as though many divine sacraria that love her wisely and with a goodness most tender and excessive, united to mercy unheard of. They love her and they find her, uh, and she finds the overflowing love that loves her immensely. This is divinely. And since the divine being is order, he loves with her. He loves her with divine justice. To see what's coming on the earth, everybody's going to get what they deserve. Everybody's going to get what they deserve. Louisa and the souls linked to Louisa will be loved divinely, with divine justice, with with the divine love itself. That's the justice of God. He has to do this. So that's why he's asking us to let go of even holy things to embrace the divine. And I know a number of people say, well, I like the prayers of the saints. And they're easy, they're comfortable, they're understandable. Well, that's true. And Jesus says, what do you want? If you want that, I'll give that to you. But he says, I want you to learn how to pray in the divine will. I want you to learn how to pray the rounds. I want you to learn how to pray uh, as, as Jesus taught Louisa to pray as Mary taught Louisa to pray. And when we let go of holy things and say, okay, teach me how to do this. I don't want a devotional life that the saints possess, but I want a divine life that you possess, Jesus, that Mary possessed. And the creature moving from one aquarium to another 
not outside but inside of these veils, feels the reflections of her God. She loves God wisely with goodness and tenderness united to divine mercy that since her God has no need of it, the Louisa and the souls linked to Louisa turn for the good of all human generations, past, present, and future. In feeling the divine love that overflows within her bosom, oh, how Louisa and the souls linked to Louisa would want to melt herself in love in order to love God, but justice preserving her gives her the just love as much of it as it is possible for a creature to obtain and confirms her life, uh, confirms her in divine life, not human life. See, God breathed into dust because he wanted that dust, that creature, bringing that creature to life to have a divine life. There were no other gods that he could share himself with. So he breathed into dust to create souls, humans, so that humans can be in God's image and likeness. And when Adam lost this, everything fell into ruin. It took 4,000 years before Jesus and Mary came to earth, the new Adam and the new Eve, redeeming mankind, our lady co-redeeming with Christ. And now 2,000 years later, they have the newborn. And Jesus says, now I want to begin again what I started with Adam. But I'm going to do something more than I did with Adam. I'm going to give to Louisa the true life of the new Adam, Jesus, and the true life of Mary, the new Eve. This is what, he, this is what God has done with Louisa. And now God wants to give this to us. There is no reason for God to do this. There's no logical reason. It's just because God is total love and he wants us to share in his divinity. What the priest does a holy mass every day, puts the drop of water into the chalice and he says, may we share in the divinity of Christ as Christ humbled himself to share in our humanity. To share in the divinity of Christ. That drop of water fuses and diffuses and becomes wine. God wants us to share in his divinity. You read the epistle to St. Peter and it's very clear. We are called to be divinized. We, this is what God is asking of us. And uh, uh, that's why John Paul II says, get ready for the third millennium. You know, a day is like a thousand years, a thousand years is like a day. Jesus said, I will rise up on the third day, the third millennium. It's a new beginning for mankind. We have been redeemed, Our Lady co-redeemed with Christ, and now is the time to be sanctified. How does this happen? Jesus says, just by reading, giving your fiat and reading, trusting in God, believing in God, hoping in God, have confidence in God, watching God have his way with us. Volume 32, 4, 29, 33. But to our sorrow, we try on God's see that the creature descends into the exile. The creature does not think about her royal place anymore, nor about the nobility of her origin. And the creature would want to slip away from our holy divine will, which more than a tender mother carries her in her arms. In making use of the doors of the senses that we had given her, she descends into the baseness of her human will. These doors we had given her were to rise again to us so as to make... Uh, so that she could make her little escapes from the exile of earth into the bosom of God in heaven. Instead, she makes use of them to make her little escapes into miseries, into weaknesses, into passions, such that descending from her divine nobility, she recognizes that she is no longer the princess of heaven, but a servant of the earth. Yet despite of this, we try on God to not close our doors, that we are love, our paternal goodness, and our compassionate mercy at the expectation, expectations that we have. And no sooner do we see that she closes the doors in order to come into our will than we go, go to meet her. This is what Jesus is doing now. He, and we open wide our doors to her. And seeing her as the uncultivated beauty with her princess garments torn and dirty, we do not make her one rebuke but with all paternal compassion, we tell her, where have you been? Poor daughter, how you have reduced yourself. 
You see how much evil you have done by living in the baseness of your human will, not united with ours. You have walked without guide. You without. You have walked without light. You have walked without food. You have walked without defense. Therefore, do not do it anymore. So that amending yourself, you redo the good lost. That's what we're going to do this year. That, that paragraph there is so important. Uh, he's asking us not to live in our human misery anymore. We have to learn the fiat. And then by doing that, by amending ourselves to live in the fiat, we will be able to redo all the good that was lost. We know that without our divine will, the creature cannot do any good. It is as if she would want to see without eyes, walking without feet, living without food. Therefore, be attentive and never leave my divine will. If you want to find the divine strength, the divine light, the divine support, and your Jesus himself at your disposal. See, that's what you're going to find out with the, with the command prayer. Uh, it is Jesus himself saying, what do you want? Ask, believe that you have received it, and it is yours. I mean, this is anything. Uh, and, and the best part is when a miracle is needed. God loves to do miracles. And so don't uh, limit God. Don't limit him. Don't say, well, God really doesn't want that. No. Ask, believe that you received it, and it is yours. Volume 33, 11, 26, 33. My divine will is not content with making her round in our works. Okay, making the rounds uh, in our divine works. Okay, God isn't content that we make the rounds. But after she has finished making her rounds, letting her know so many things about creation, and filling her even to the brim with love, it conducts her in its arms into the womb of the Supreme Being, which casts her like a little stone into the interminable sea of its attributes. See, God, St. Teresa says, I, I want you to be open the size of a thimble. God will fill you. Open the size of a bathtub. God will fill you. The divine will is to enter into the ocean with Louisa, the infinite ocean of the divine love, and drown. Not just to open yourself up like the saints, but to dive into this infinite ocean and drown in the love of God. Never to exit. To always be in the, in the light of God, the love of God, the life of God. And the little daughter of our divine will, what does she do? Like a little stone cast into the sea, makes all the waters of the, of the sea ripple. And so she moves all the sea of our divine being. That's what God wants. He wants us to participate in him. We are that drop of nothing that the priest puts in the chalice filled with wine. We are nothing. And yet that drop of water becomes wine. It fuses and diffuses and becomes wine. And while she swims in the divine will, she drowns with love, with light, with sanctity, with wisdom, with goodness, and so forth. And oh, how beautiful it is to see her, to hear what she says when she feels drowned. All your love is mine. And I put it in an act, an act to pray that you, Lord, that your kingdom of your divine will come upon earth, that your sanctity is mine, your light is mine, your goodness is mine, your mercy is mine. It is not my littleness that prays to you, but your oceans of power, oceans of goodness that pray to you, that urge you, that assail you, and watch your divine, divine will reigning on earth as it is in heaven. To see how we're supposed to pray. It's not for our family and our friends and our neighbors. That's, you know, Jesus says, that's what the pagans do. And that's kind of selfish. But to pray that God reigns on earth as it is in heaven. That God's kingdom comes to earth as it is in heaven. The fulfillment of the Our Father. In fact, one sees the littleness of the creature acting as queen in our divine being, reuniting our divine immensity and power together and making us, triune God, ask ourselves what Louisa wants and the souls linked to Louisa wants. We, triune God, also want. That's why I'm saying 
Your, 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 the miracles that are going to happen through the intercession of Louisa are going to astonish the world. It's not going to be one miracle that was for John Paul II or one no miracles for Pope uh, uh, John the Twenty Third. It's going to become miracles upon miracles upon miracles, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of unbelievable miracles that the world is going to see through Louisa. This is she's. That's why you have to remember, as Father Bucci says, Louisa is the saint of the church. Luisa La Santa, the saint of the church. We have to get to know her. And that's why the relic cards are so powerful. It, they really are. Volume 33, 325, 30, 34. My gaze generates glances of love, of compassion, of tenderness, of mercy. I never lose sight of anyone. My gazes multiply for everyone. And oh, the power of my gazes. Oh, how much pity it pours itself over the human miseries. It is so much that in order to place them in safety, it encloses the creature in my pupil in order to keep the soul defended and surrounded with inexpressible affection and tenderness as to amaze the whole of heaven. Jesus says, My tongue speaks and it generates words that give life, sublime teachings, it generates prayers, it speaks and generates wounds and arrows of love in order to give the generation of my ardent love to everyone and to make me loved by everyone. You see what we're doing? This is not good and holy and saintly. This is not devotional. This is the life of Jesus to everyone. My hands generate works, wounds, nails, blood, and braces in order to make me work of each one, balm in order to sweeten their wounds, nails in order to wound them and purify them, blood in order to wash them in braces, in order to embrace them and carry them as in the triumph um, in my arms. It's to be one with God, fused with God, to let God expand our capacity by letting him breathe in our breathing, beat in our heart beating, never to be separated from God, never to be alone, but always filled with the presence of God. My hands generate works, wounds, nails, blood, and braces in order to make me work each one of them, balm to sweeten their wounds, nails in order to wound them and purify them, blood in order to wash them, embraces in order to embrace them and carry them as in triumph of my arms. Volume 33, 526, 35. You must know. And again, the book on you must knows are so important to study. As you go through the 36 volumes where Jesus says, you must know. This is the command from Jesus. And as you grow in the divine will, uh, the book of you must knows are, are, are very, very important for us. As Every time you read it, Jesus is going to expand your capacity to understand what we have to know about this gift. That one of the purest joys that this creature can give me is trust in me. Jesus, I trust in you. I feel her as my daughter. I do what I want with her. I can say that trust makes me known for who I am and that I am the immense being. I am my goodness without end. I am my mercy without li limits. And when I find more trust, I love the soul more and I bound more towards creatures. Do you see what's going to happen this year of mercy? The more we trust, the more we focus on this gift that the Holy Father has given us through the, through the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, th this is going to change the world. It's going to prepare the world for the kingdom. Volume 34, 6, 18, 37. After this, I continued to think about the divine will, and I said to myself, it is not enough to give oneself one time to the mercy and divine fiat. Is it not enough to give oneself one time to the mercy and divine fiat? What can be the good of giving oneself always? And my always love of Jesus added, My blessed daughter Louisa, you do not know the secrets of our love, of our infinite stratagems that reach even to the excess. Indeed, one needs to love in order to know how to find so many discoveries of love so as to be able to give and receive from whom one loves. So again, this goes back to spending time in front of the Blessed Sacrament. You must know that every time the creature gives herself to us, to the mercy of our volition, 
We try and God give ourselves to the soul as abandoning ourselves into the bosom of the creature. And if you knew what this abandoning of ourselves means, it's the grace, it's the good that we try and God leave this in the soul. The renewal of our life that we repeat for the soul. Your heart would burst with joy, with happiness, with of love, if you only understood. So again, think of being in front of the Blessed Sacrament and just saying to Jesus over and over and over again, I love you, I love you, I love you. Just just imagine what, what's happening. Vine 34, 7, 25, 37. Now my daughter, if the soul lets my divine will reign, her love shall not be sterile anymore, but fertile. Nor shall she reduce herself into only words or even into works. She shall feel in herself the creative strength of our divine love. She shall place herself in our same conditions. And if we try on God love, if we operate, if we operate, we give. But what thing do we give? It's the great gift of our divine being. See, God gives himself. So our love is so much that we give uh, we want to give everything. That if we give, we want to give everything, even ourselves, to the mercy of the creature. Our love would not be content if it does not say, I, God, have given everything. I, God, have nothing more to give her. More so, because possessing our divine will, we are secure. We are in our house with all the decorum and all the honors and all the decency that befits us. Therefore, possessing our creative fiat itself, the creature loves us. And in her love, the creature shall give us in reciprocation our gift, the gift of her life, such that it is life that we shall give to each other. God gives divine life and we give our life in the divine will back to God. And every time that she shall love us, our creative strength shall multiply her life in order to give it to us as gift. Her love shall not remain isolated, but with the fullness of its life, because she gives herself to the mercy of her creator, and here equalized the parts between creator and creature. Her life receives in gift, and life she gives. So God breathes into Louisa, and, and Louisa breathes into God. So uh, every heartbeat, it's blood pumping in and blood pumping out. But it's not human at this point. It's divine. And if the creature has her limits, my divine will makes up for her. More so because in giving us her life as gift, she gives us everything. Nothing remains for herself. It's your whole breath goes out. God breathes in. I love you. We breathe out. I love you. Everything is given. There's nothing left. And so our love remains satisfied and reciprocated. Therefore, if you want to give us everything and receive everything from us, let our divine will reign in you and everything shall be granted to you. Everything shall be granted to you. You must know, volume 35, 11, 7, 37, you must know that as I form the day of the creature by manifesting many truths about my divine will to you in the book of heaven, so Mary, the sovereign queen, with her love, suffering and prayers and acts, which done in my divine will, filled both heaven and earth, forming an appropriate endowment for those who shall live in the divine will with a great anxiety, longs and sighs to be able to equip her children. She sees herself immersed in the many riches of grace, of love, of sanctity, but she can't find her children to equip them since they don't live in the same divine will in which Mary lived. Look, my daughter, Louisa, how it is written in everything Our Lady did and suffered says, for my children. Therefore, if Our Lady loves, she calls her children to receive the endowment of her love in order to make us recognize them as her children, as our children too, and to love them as we love her. If she prays, she wants to give the endowment of her prayers, and some she wants, Mary wants to provide them with all Our Lady's sanctity, with all Our Lady's pains, and with the very life of her son. How touching it is to hear Our Lady who, to look at her keeping her children with her maternal heart as if inside us aquarium. In all Our Lady's acts, she breathes and breaths. She calls her children and says to our Supreme Being, all that I, Mary, am and all that I, Mary, possess is for my children. Please listen to me. 
I, Mary, feel my heart bursting for love. Have mercy on a mother who loves and wants to provide for her children to make them happy. My happiness is not full. I feel it half because I don't have my children delighting together with me. Therefore, hurry. May the divine will be known so that they may also know the restlessness of their mother and how I, Mary, want to provide for them and make them happy and holy. Do you think that we try and God remain indifferent before this touching scene before Our Lady who is in spasms of love so much that with a maternal tenderness and with her rights as mother she prays to us and begs us? Ah, uh, no. How many times because of her concerns I, God, manifest more surprising truths than my fiat and give her free reign to pour out her children a more extensive provision. And since she shall be allowed to do it only in accordance with her knowledges. Therefore, you too enter my divine will. And together with the celestial mother Mary, pray and supplicate that our divine will be known and reign in all the creatures, past, present, and future. Volume 35, 2, 14, 38. My good daughter Louisa, how our fiat displayed its operating powerful and wise love in the creation in such a way that all created things are filled with our love, our power, our wisdom with unspeakable beauty. We, Triune God, can call them the administers of our supreme being. But we did even more with the creation of the sovereign queen. Our love was not satisfied by the mere display. Rather, it wanted to assume the attitude of piety, of tenderness, of compassion, so profound and intimate as to be turned into tears for love of the creatures. This is why, as we pronounced our fiat to create Mary, we called Mary to life. We created forgiveness, mercy, and reconciliation between us and mankind, and we deposited in this celestial creature Mary as the administrator between our children and hers. Therefore, the Sovereign Lady possesses oceans of forgiveness, oceans of mercy, oceans of piety, as well as oceans of tears of our love in which Our Lady can cover all human generations, regenerated in these oceans created by us within the Blessed Mother. Seas of forgiveness, seas of mercy, seas of piety, and so tender as to soften the hardest hearts. Volume 35, 3, 6, 38. My daughter, when the creature abandoned herself in our divine will, our, satisf our satisfaction is so great that she pours into us and we pour into her, giving her our new life, our new love, our new sanctity, our new knowledge of our supreme being. When the creature abandons herself in our divine will, we, Triune God, can make the greatest prodigies and most surprising graces in her. That's what God wants to do in us. And since our divine will shall receive and deposit what we, Triune God, want to give to the creatures, by abandoning herself in our divine will, the soul storms heaven. Her empire is such that she imposes herself over our divine being, and it encloses within her littleness, and while she triumphant encloses herself within our divine womb. That's what Louisa has done, and when we link ourselves to Louisa, we also, this is also happens with us. The heavens are amazed, and the angels and saints remain ecstatic. All feel a new life flowing within them by virtue of the act of abandonment of the creature, while still a pilgrim on earth. And finding her abandoned in our fiat, we find that we, Triune God, can do whatever we want. She lends herself completely into our power. So we begin work and we form in the soul many little fountains of love, of goodness, of sanctity, of mercy, and so on. In this way, when our love wants to love, we set those little fountains of love in motion with our omnipotent breath. And she loves us, letting so much love overflow from the font as to float the entire celestial court. And when we want to use goodness, mercy, or grace, we set these founts in motion. And the earth remains floated in our goodness and mercy, and some are converted, and some receive graces. We could all do all of this directly by ourselves as God, but we feel more delighted and pleased using the fonts that we ourselves have formed inside the creature. Through Louisa, through Our Lady and Louisa, we feel more moved to use our mercy towards everyone. And we have intermediary, we have our intermediary between heaven and earth who 
in her abandon makes us try and God pour graces and makes us love all the creatures with new love. Therefore, the more you, Louise, are abandoned our divine will, the more magnanimous we, try and God, shall be towards you and towards others. And all, at least the more disposed, shall find new divine strength, new divine guidance. See, this is what we're going to discover. Volume 36, 7, 6, 39, 38, excuse me. My daughter Louise says the creature calls my divine will in her acts, in her prayers. My divine will repeats that act together with her, praying together with the creature. Since its immensity is everywhere, the creation, the sun, all heaven, uh, all the saints, uh, all the angels, all the saints feel within themselves the strength of that creative prayer and all of them pray together. The prodigy of this prayer is omnipotent, and it involves everyone, giving effect to its, to everyone. Only those who, ungrateful, don't want to receive it, remain without its effects. Therefore, my divine will possesses the virtue of prayer. Oh, how beautiful it is to see praying in this divine way, and with this creative virtue that imposes itself on all, makes everything pray, this prayer imposes itself on our divine attributes, making us pour rains of mercy, rains of graces, rains of forgiveness and love. And it is sufficient to know that it is our prayer to say, it, the divine will, can give everything to those that live in the divine will. You have to remember this. When times get tough, begin to focus the living in the divine will. It will give you everything, guaranteed now, you must know that whether the creature does or does not do our holy divine will, whether the soul lives in our divine will or not, she is already in its immensity. Or better still, my divine will is life of her life, act of her act, and is continuously assisting her with its creative and preserving acts. Therefore, the one Louisa who lives in the most holy divine will can feel the divine will's life, divine will's power, divine will's sanctity, and how much I, God, love the soul. And it's Louisa and the soul's linked to Louisa. So again, this is spectacular. Our God has given this to us because we are the ones that have been called by God to live at this time. We have been predestined to live at this time. This, this year of mercy that's coming, don't miss a day. Don't miss a day. Uh, really focus on the divine will, uh, repairing and redoing everyone and everything, past, present, and future, uh, to really bring back to the, its origin the, the, uh, uh, the human generations. So we'll pray now the prayer of consecration to the holy divine will. And if we can kneel, please do. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O adorable and divine will, here I am before the immensity of your light, that your eternal goodness may open to me the doors and make me enter into it to form my life all in you, divine will. Therefore, prostrate before your light, I, the littlest among all creatures, come, O adorable will, into the little group of the first children of your supreme fiat, prostrate in my nothingness, I beseech and implore your endless light that I may want to invest me and eclipse everything that does not belong to you in such a way that I may do nothing other than look, comprehend, and live in you, divine will. It will be my life, the center of my intelligence, the enrapture of my heart and of my whole being. In this heart, the human will shall no longer have life. I will banish it forever when to form the new Eden of peace, of happiness, and of love. With it, I shall always be happy. I shall have a unique strength and a sanctity that sanctifies everything and brings everything to God. Here prostrate, I invoke the help of the sacrosanct trinity that they admit me to live in the cloister of the divine will so as to restore in me the original order of creation just as the creature was created. Celestial Mother, Sovereign Queen of the Divine Fiat, take me by the hand and enclose me in the light of the divine will. You will be my guide, my tender mother, you will guard your child, will teach me to live and to maintain myself in the order and the bounds of the divine will. Celestial Sovereign, to your heart I entrust my whole being. I will be the tiny little child of the divine will. You will teach me the divine will, and I will be attentive and listening to you. 
You will lay your blue mantle over me so that the infernal serpent may not dare to penetrate into the sacred Eden to entice me and make me fall into the maze of the human will. Heart of my highest good Jesus, you will give me your flames that they may burn me, consume me, and nourish me to form in me the life of the supreme will. St. Joseph, you will be my protector, the custodian of my heart, and will keep the keys of my will in your hands. You will keep my heart jealously and will never give it to me again, that I may be sure never to go out of the will of God. Guardian angel, guard me, defend me, help me in everything, so that my Eden may grow flourishing and be the call of the whole world into the will of God. Celestial court, come to my help, and I promise you to live always in the divine will. Amen. And may the blood that flowed upon the wood of this cross free us from our human will, that we live in God's holy divine will always. We ask this in Jesus' name, under the mantle of Mary, through the intercession of Louisa, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. Well, thank you for joining us tonight. We are so thrilled to have completed this series on mercy. We will be back to you next week with, hold on, let me check my calendar here. We will be moving into fulfillment, Louisa and fulfillment in the divine well. Looking forward to meeting with you once again next week, Monday night, 6 p.m. Central. Fiat. <laughs>